All right, we're back with Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday evening. Hope you got a chance to really enjoy the solar eclipse today. It did not disappoint. Anyone who has experienced a total solar eclipse in their lifetime will tell you that it never disappoints. It is everything you hoped it would be, if not more. And I've uh, seen a lot of outpouring on social media today, lots of pictures and videos and testimonials about what an experience this was. I did not experience totality myself. I was here in downtown Youngstown, just outside of the area of totality, but it was still really cool. Watched it from the roof here at the uh, station, and uh, it was a noticeable, noticeable change around the time of totality. And for those who were in Trumbull County, Mercer County, and points off to the north closer to Lake Erie, what a show the atmosphere and uh, the moon and the sun pulled off today in our atmosphere here on Earth pretty much cooperated. No, it was not perfectly sunny like it was for much of Sunday, but it was you know, clear enough that we got some really nice views of the eclipse. Thanks to everyone who's been submitting pictures. We've been overwhelmed with all the pictures and videos that have been submitted. Um, wanted to talk briefly this evening about, because I've gotten a lot of questions about this, about what uh, some people saw during totality. Thanks to TJ, who took this picture from Lake Milton. It was kind of this right down here, and in general, kind of what was going on on the outer edges of the moon during totality. A few different things going on here. Here, The corona is kind of the the back glow, if you will. It's the sun's atmosphere, basically. That's what you can see during a total solar eclipse, especially if the sun is, is really active, like it is right now. You can see solar prominences, and that's kind of these flares. You know, Some people call them solar flares, but the technical term is a prominence. Um, we saw those. And uh, there's another phenomenon called Bailey's beads that happens during totality, where you get these little beads of light at different intervals around the moon. And basically what that is caused by is the terrain of the moon, believe it or not, the, the hills and the valleys, the rugged terrain of the moon, which is hard to you know comprehend on a normal day. But during a total solar eclipse, you can tell that the moon is a rugged place because little sli sil slivers, I should say, of light can get in between those hillier areas and shine on through the valleys and those that's what Bailey's beads are and so that's a very common sight during a total solar eclipse. Really cool time lapse from Niles today, big crowd at Eastwood Mall with all the festivities today and right around of course right on schedule at 315 boom totality and street lights came on and uh, animals reacted and it was just you know it's totality is kind of somewhere between dusk and nighttime it's not quite as dark as the middle of the night but it's like it is several minutes if not 20 minutes after sunset so really really cool and another way to look at this for us uh, weather geeks out there this is my personal weather station at my house and what we're looking at here is solar radiation I have a weather flow tempest weather station and everything was humming along as it often does in April with solar radiation values up to around 800, 900, but then look what happens. Partial eclipse starts at 2 o'clock and right on cue, the radiation that's making it to my weather station drops and as we reach totality at 315, it was just like the sun had set. There was hardly any incoming solar radiation and then it started to climb back upwards reaching another peak as it often does during the uh, late afternoon, right around four o'clock or so. So there's any number of things you can look at to kind of visualize how cool this was. The temperature difference here in Youngstown, we have a station up on the roof and the temperature difference wasn't dramatic. It was a couple of degrees, two, two and a half degrees. But I was talking with meteorologist Jody White who was farther north in the area of totality and she said she got legitimately cold. Um, not sure how much cooler it got there, but everybody was kind of shivering for a time right around totality. And that's, you know, something that can be expected during totality. The temperature does drop, especially in the heart of totality. It may drop several degrees. All right, on to the weather. You know, we were talking earlier, like, now what? We've been talking about the eclipse so much for so long that it's kind of like, uh, you know, right after the Super Bowl ends and you don't have football again until August, you're kind of like, oh, now what? Uh, but we're going to talk about weather, of course, here on Weather for Weather Geeks, and a severe weather threat is ongoing down across parts of the southern plain states this evening. Now, we've got a couple of chances for some heavy gusty storms around eastern Ohio and western PA during midweek. The first one comes late in the day tomorrow. A cold front is heading our way. Now, this is a very marginal situation. The atmosphere will become a little bit unstable, though, towards the end of the day. And I think right around sunset or into the evening hours, a few pop-up stragglers, nothing all that organized, will probably try to form. And any storm that gets going might try to produce a little bit of hail and have a gusty wind. But it's a, it's a marginal threat. I don't think this is a big severe weather day. I don't think this is a tornado threat. 
Um, this is maybe just a precursor to what may happen on Thursday. So let's talk about the next few days. Here's that weak cool front heading our way tomorrow. We'll get off to a dry start. In fact, a lot of the midday and afternoon will be dry. It's more towards evening that a shower and thunderstorm will be possible with leftover showers then for a lot of the night and into maybe first thing Wednesday morning. That front kind of washes out, but the atmosphere stays kind of juicy into the day on Wednesday. A lot of clouds around occasionally. Maybe there's a shower, but I think there'll be a lot of dry time on Wednesday. But here's our next system. This is a more potent system. This area of low pressure will be spinning up quickly. It'll be strengthening rapidly, and a pretty good warm front will surge out ahead of it. And we'll get into that warm sector, I think, in most of eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania as we get into the second half of the day Thursday. A lot of wind shear. Looks like it'll be overhead on Thursday, especially late in the day. Changing of the wind direction and speed with height through the atmosphere. The atmosphere will become fairly unstable. Not as unstable as maybe a you know a standard June day, but by April standards, kind of unstable. So it's no surprise today with the uh, Storm Prediction Center's outlook for Thursday. You know they do days one, two, and three in a lot of the you know colors and maps that we're used to looking at. But days four through eight are a little more general. It's just possible or probable. And so Thursday is day four. They do have us in the possible area in a lot of eastern Ohio. And when this becomes the day three outlook in the middle of the night tonight, I think we'll be at least in a marginal risk for severe weather with that day three outlook that's issued in the middle of the night tonight. All right, so temperatures over the next 10 days. Nothing real cold here, but there will be a pretty decent cool shot briefly at the end of the week. Uh, raw, clammy, blustery Friday. Uh, there'll be some showers around, temperatures struggling to get out of the 40s. It'll be a cool start to the weekend, even though I think the sun will try to come out Saturday afternoon. Beyond that, I think we'll go into a stretch where it's going to be pretty consistently mild. Nothing crazy for mid-April, but a lot of 60s in our future from Sunday into next week. I do think there'll be another cool shot beyond this 10-day period as we go towards, say, the 20th of the month or so. Um, but around the, from the 14th through the 18th, to me, this looks like a on on balance a fairly mild pattern. Have we seen the last snowflakes of the year? We might have seen them at the end of last week. This coming Friday night, as the cooler air wraps in, maybe, just maybe, there's a couple of snowflakes around. But beyond that, I don't see many chances anytime real soon. Keep an eye on the last 10 days of the month for perhaps a couple of abnormally chilly days that might provide a few snowflakes. But are we done with accumulating snow? I'd say odds are starting to favor that more and more as, of course, we get deeper into April. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks tonight. Thanks for watching all of my and our team coverage of the Eclipse on air and online in the lead up to today's great event. Really appreciate everyone. Appreciate all the really positive comments I've gotten on social media as well. Make it a great rest of your Monday night. I'll see you back here on Tuesday.